the spores that we've talked about up to this point are primarily designed for both reproduction and also dissemination, that is movement of the fungus from point A to point B in the environment. Certainly those dark colored spores of Thalaviopsis, that Tootsie Roll fungus, also have a function for survival. And in this particular slide, another example of a spore where the primary function of the spore is to help the organism survive in really adverse environmental conditions. There's a black arrow in this particular slide pointing to this kind of circular structure. This is what's called an OO spore. This is a resting spore that's produced by those fungi-like water molds that I talked about earlier. And you can see how many of these spores are embedded in this tissue. This is actually root tissue. What you'll notice about these spores is that they have a very, very thick wall, and that's what helps them be very, very stable, particularly when they get into a soil environment. There are certain OO spores of certain types of water molds. In particular, there have been some reports of OO spores of the organism Phytophthora, again, a common root rot organism, that can survive for up to 40 years in soil. And think about that in the context of how you're going to manage an organism that can survive for that long. Now, you may have noticed that I've been using a lot of food analogies. I never really had a good food analogy for this particular spore until one of my students came up one time and said, you know, those look like Cheerios. So we're going to dub this the Cheerios fungus. Hopefully that'll help you remember that these are oospores and that these help with the survival of this particular organism.